Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that you guys have had a great day uh, as you start to wind, wind down your week. Uh, as for me, it's been, as usual, a long day and I'm not done yet. It's uh, after four. I'm going to go home and take a quick break and then I'm going to finish up there. But I want to take some time and use this travel time to get some things done uh, in communicating some of my concerns and uh, so forth with you guys while I'm traveling. And so with that being said, uh, get right to it. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we need to expand our reach uh, to be as impactful as we possibly can. So if you uh, find what you hear or see on this channel useful, uh, make sure to share it with those that you think it will be helpful for or enlightening to. And uh, that will be appreciated. Again, this is about empowerment. This is about uh, bringing knowledge, empowerment, uh, accountability. It's about challenging uh, our people to rise to the occasion. What I want to share with you guys today is a little history a little sociology, a little psychology, all wrapped up into about seven or eight minutes. I don't want it to be too long. Uh, my seven or eight minutes, you know, may get a little longer. Uh, for those of you who know me, I'm very detail oriented. So I like to explain myself. So I leave very little to be misinterpreted. Uh, it's just the way that I've always been. Well, how did we get to a point and a place where we are in last place in every socioeconomic category and every political category. Um, how did we get to the point where we are so heavily dependent upon a people who collectively do not have our best interest at heart? How are we so easily found working on and doing things that actually are diametrically opposed to the paths that we need to take in order to empower ourselves? Put more simple, why are we so bent towards doing things that serve them and not ourselves? Well, it all boils down to three words, values, interests and principles. Everybody functions on values, interests, and principles. Your character is built on values, interests, and principles. How you operate in the world is built on values, interests, and principles. You can call them VIPs, the uh, things that are immensely important uh, to the elevation and su uh, sustaining of any group or people when they are uh, misguided, when they are interrupted, when they are in any way manipulated, it has a negative impact. Well, what you have to understand is over 400 years ago, our entire socioeconomic ecosystem was disrupted. When we were pulled out of our natural habitat, our natural environment, uh, our indigenous sphere, and we were moved around and placed in different places on this planet. And what, what happened is, um, what happened is, the natural, the natural practice of subjugation began. Historically, when you study the conquering of any people for thousands of years back, when you study the conquering of any people, one of the first things you have to do is interrupt their identity. 
and the way that you interrupt their identity is you rob them of their values, their interests, their principles, their spiritual practices, their names, and their history. When you do that, you remove them from their identity. Their identity and their heritage is what serves as the foundation of their hope, the foundation of their expectation and anticipation of the future, and the very force that will push them through their difficult moments. You don't completely subjugate or enslave a people with shackles. Uh, Haiti proved that. Uh, it's been proven through time that while shackles will provide temporary restraint, you must first enslave the mind before you can ultimately enslave the people. Well, a part of that process is the interruption of values, interests, and principles. It is the taking away of the very thing and the core element that provides identity, substance, and responsibility, uh, you know, uh, how one projects into the future, what they can expect from life, the self-concept, the self-identity, self-esteem, self-confidence. All of that comes through values, interests, and principles that are normally dictated in the early years within the filial environment, the family environment, the home. And then it is passed on and uh, reinforced throughout the village and now you would equate the village to the community. Um, here's the problem. One of the first things that happened when we were brought up here is we, our names were changed. We were given the names of our captors. Uh, we were renamed by our captors, which also created an identity of subjugation. Someone else had more power over me at a level that allowed them to take my name and give me a name. I don't have the authority to name myself or my progeny. Um, if I do name myself and my progeny, it has to be approved by someone else who has authority over me. Um, and here we go. The giving the, of a child a name was something immensely important within the history of our people dating back to the continent of Africa. Uh, regardless of village uh, or, or regardless of what is now nations and borders, regardless of where you were, this is pretty much a common theme that the naming of a child set the course of the child's life. The establishment of that came long before the child was born. And then you, you're put into an environment where that's interrupted. Then you're put into an environment with very core element that allows you to establish values, interests, and principles that would serve uh, you as an individual and your collective people or your tribe is taken away, which is the family. The family was constantly and abruptly disrupted. Children were sold off, men were sold off, women were sold off for the sole purpose of not allowing the cohesive function of the family to come together and create bonds. Bonds lead to the willingness to die for something. Bonds lead to uh, an ability to stand on something and have something to live for. Everything that created any form of structure and stability was disrupted. And eventually you get to a point where the transatlantic slave trade was outlawed. But by that time, uh, the slave population had grown to the point to where it would sustain itself. So now, Slaves were born. So now you're born without an understanding of a history. You're born into a value system that does not value you. And you are born into it in a place and a position of subjugation in which you never knew that there was a point that you were free. It may be barely uh, or vaguely referred to, but there's no history. The griots had been killed and died off. There were no one, there was no one to tell you of the great times. There were no one to tell you of who you were and what you were capable of, the stock you come from and the principles upon which your ancestors lived. So you began to believe that where you were was your lot in life and then you start to perpetuate it and then even there comes a time when the chattel slavery is outlawed and then you are told you have freedom but freedom 
is not experienced. It's it's the it's the reverse of slavery. Slavery is not experienced until the mind is fully subjugated and under the control of the one who is the enslaver or the oppressor. The same thing for liberation. Liberation is not experienced when the shackles are removed. Liberation liberation is experienced when the mind is set free. When the mind has its own focus, when the mind now pursues that thing which is best for the one who houses the mind. And that is something that the vast majority of us have not experienced. I keep trying to tell everyone, you can't keep trusting a system to educate your children, first and foremost. Second of all, you're going to have to look within the family structure and understand how important that structure is in order to understand why we have to restore it because it's within the family structure that values, interests, and principles are first introduced. A child is first introduced to the values, interests, and principles that will serve them best when they're in the home. When the home is disrupted, when the home is gutted, when the home is dysfunctional, when the home is functioning in a state of toxicity, there is no uh, positive uh, and stable and consistent environment in which a child can have the right principles inculcated into their psyche at a level that it's anchored enough that when they go out into a world and experience messages that are diametrically opposed to the idea that they've been given that they can stand on it. you got to inculcate it deeply enough and protect it long enough that it takes root and they understand who they are. They're not shaken by messages that they're inferior. They're not shaken by messages that they're not beautiful. They're not shaken by messages that they are savages. They're not shaken by messages that they are naturally and uh, in, in, innately animalistic. They know who they are. They understand the force of their power, the, the breadth and, and, and the broadness of their creativity and their imagination and their power. They understand that civilization was birthed through their creativity and the ability to take something and make it out of nothing, that they come from a stock that's so exceptional and extraordinary that they don't have to demean anybody that's not a part of them to experience their greatness. Their greatness stands alone, not by demeaning or degrading someone else, but by just purely being who they are. We have a long way to go. We're not educated. I'm trying to tell you, when we bring children into the midst of our programs, they come in thinking and behaving one way they leave thinking and behaving another. Well, they never really truly leave because we don't lose contact. We don't step back. We have kids, when we came into their life, they were on a crash course to early pregnancy and prison. Now, some of those kids are dropping back in and visiting and uh, as, as, as college graduates for those who can find a way. And we talk, college isn't for everybody. If you can't see a means through which you can get through college with little to no debt and then immediately turn what you get from college into a means through which you can create an income, college is not for you. Maybe you need a trade. Maybe you need to take that creative power in your mind and create your own opportunity through a business. We teach ownership is the number one goal. You may have to go through a job or two to get to a point of ownership because you have responsibilities as an adult. But you should never be satisfied that we teach them values, interests, and principles that separate them from the need to be supported and validated by a system that does not have their interests at heart. We do all of that. And what I'm telling you is when you introduce it and you're consistent with it and you show it and they st you start to see the lights come on. Oh, that's a beautiful feeling when you start to see the lights come on. But what I'm telling you is we can't consistently do what we're doing. That's why so much darkness is setting in. That's why we have so much death in our community. You know why? Because we haven't showed them the beauty of self. We haven't introduced them to the, to the broadness of their majesty. We haven't done that in a grand scope of things. They don't see any value in themselves. And when a child doesn't see value in themselves, it's impossible for them to see values in the lives of others who look like them. They, they, they tend to have a level of self-hatred because they don't measure up to the standard of Eurocentric uh, reality. They don't stand up to the Eurocentric idea of 
what is, the Eurocentric idea of what's popular and Eurocentric idea of what's beautiful, the Eurocentric idea of what's professional and, and, and what's classy and everything else. We are so busy trying to fit into and integrate into a system that was never meant for us that we never truly walk into our own self-majesty and we lose sight of who we are or we never gain sight of who we are and we walk around in a fog that makes us easily manipulated and easily triggered and we go around being misled by people who are benefiting from our lost state of mind. It's time to change it. I've been writing about it for decades. I've been lecturing on it for decades. And, 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 and it's got to get beyond the state of simply hearing. It's got to become something that we embrace, something that we take on, something that we immerse ourselves in. It's got to become a part of our walk, of our responsibility. There has to be levels of accountability. There has to be a love for something outside of ourselves. Because one of the problems that I see far too often is that for those of us who are able to make it, a lot of us walk away from the responsibility. We disconnect. We don't even want to be associated with it. We start finding all kinds of reasons not to be a part of it. And then we leave those behind behind who we really should be helping. It's time for something better. Look, I'm, 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 I'm going to leave it at that. I've gone way longer than I planned on going. I've doubled my seven minutes plus, but I'm going to get off of here. Look, we've got work to do. We've got to understand the importance of instilling values, interests, and principles into our youth that lead them to something greater and they need to be protected long enough for those teachings and those lessons and those VIPs to take root. On that note, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to support the work that we do at the Odyssey Project. Uh, the links are in the description box. The means through which you can show your love is in the description box. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.